think you've got self-care all figured out. It's time to think again. In this video, we are going to talk about 10 of the most pervasive myths around self-care. From the seductive idea of lavish spa treatments and rigorous routines to the idea that self-care is a lonely thing that you do by yourself. We're going to shatter some myths today and rewrite the self-care playbook. So join me and let's shatter some myths. My name is Miko and I am on a mission to help people add more love to their self-care. And that includes you, my love. So diving right in, let's start with more is always better. Sometimes there's this idea that for self-care, you got to go somewhere, you got to do something different. And there are definitely times for that. And what I'm going to suggest is going to also benefit those times. But self-care doesn't have to be more than what you bring to your existence with every breath. Now, you might be really busy and be like, how can I possibly bring self-care to my busy day? I'm taking care of other people. I have a high stress job. Breath is our connection to life. And how long does it take to take a deep breath? And think about yourself for a second with that lightning fast mind of yours. Not very much time. And you can apply that to anything you do, whether you are at the spa engaging in a luxurious self-care experience or you're troubleshooting on the job or at home with your kids or in a classroom full of kids. Just that second of you giving yourself loving attention is self-care. Moving on to number two, self-care is selfish. This is not true. If you've ever flown in a plane, you've heard the flight attendant tell you to put your own oxygen mask on before you put someone else's on. This is also true for self-care. When we take care of ourselves in a way that's true to us, we are filling up our cup and we will have more to give to everything we are and do. And that includes how we show up for others. And it's so important that we give ourselves this loving attention. And again, that can be as simple as a mindful breath. And mindfulness is attention without judgment. Simple as that. It can be savoring a sip of tea or coffee or water. It can be taking a deep breath. It can be enjoying the sun for a second. It can be just standing in the moment and remembering in case anyone forgot to tell you recently that you are an amazing, unique human being. There has been no one like you up until now and there will be no one like you ever again. So your breath, your presence is your unique gift to the world. And it's the foundation that everything else you do is built on. Number three, 
Self-care equals indulgence. Sure, we all like to have some indulgence from time to time. Self-care happens all the time. The quality of self-care you give yourself, no matter what you're doing, is your particular brand of self-care. Whatever it is that you do to bring your best to your life is self-care. It's not something that has to be expensive, either in time or money. It's the quality of appreciation you give yourself and everything that comes from that. Number four, self-care is only for the affluent. No, self-care is not only for rich people or people with big self-care budgets. Self-care is for everyone. And it's, it's each of us taking the time to honor our own interests and values and our well-being so that we can show up in the world with the energy and the presence that we want to bring. Sometimes the marketing can be that self-care is extravagant and the true heart of self-care can be done on any budget by anyone who is breathing. And it's just that choice to savor the moment and to bring your own luxurious presence to whatever you're doing, no matter what your circumstances are. And that makes it a lot more accessible for all of us. It's not something that only the rich can do. Number five, self-care is a one-size-fits-all. Your self-care may look very different from someone else's self-care, especially at different times in your life. Sometimes we can be quick to assume that what someone else is doing for self-care is something that we should be doing for self-care. Or maybe we think that someone else should be doing self-care differently. But self-care looks different for everyone and even across your life, self-care is going to look different depending on your health, your energy levels, your schedule, all of that. So give yourself a break and give others a break too and realize that you are the sovereign of your life and your care. And even though it doesn't feel like that, Sometimes with all the obligations and expectations that are placed on you every day, your self-care is still the priority and that's what is going to make your care of your life, your business, your work sustainable. Number six, self-care means going it alone. It does sound like that because it's self-care. But self-care isn't only solitary activities. It's not only uh, bubble baths by yourself. It's, uh, obviously with a lavish self-care, usually there's you know, someone at the spa involved. But self-care is, is everything you choose to do to support yourself through life. And that includes very much getting professional support for whatever it is that you need in your life. There's no shame. In fact, there is honor in getting the right amount of support from therapy, from counseling, from uh, coaching, Whatever it is that helps you bring your best 
that is also self-care because it's directed by you towards your own care. Number seven, self-care must be scheduled. Some self-care activities obviously will go on the calendar, but the heart of self-care is 24 seven. It's how you think, how you feel about yourself, those things that you can do in any place at any time in that moment of your amazing attention that only you can give. That is the heart of self-care and will flow into every self-care activity that you do and also is something that you can do no matter where you're at in your life, um, what your financial resources are or what your schedule is like. All you need is a moment. Number eight, self-care is only for stressful times. Sometimes we just give and give and give and, and until we reach a point where we're like, oh my God, now I really need some self-care. Make a commitment to give yourself self-care as often as you can to reduce those incredibly stressful times where the stress is just built up, built up, built, built up. And now you absolutely must stop or you're gonna have a burnout. Instead, take those little breaks, those little moments, and it will give you more energy just, we really underestimate the power of our loving attention, our presence, our mindfulness, which is attention without judgment. When we do that without running a story, without worrying, without focusing on what we're not or what we don't have, there's, that's pure life right there. And there's so much energy in that. And that's a gift that we can give to ourselves that you can give to yourself anytime you think of it. Number nine, self-care is only physical. Maybe this is not a myth for you, but for many, it seems like self-care is more about uh, the physical activity. It's, uh, it's, it's more than that. It's the whole experience. It's how you, it's how you feel about whatever it is that you're doing. It's the, your emotional, it's attention to your emotional state, your mental state, your spiritual state, your whole entire being. That is all self-care how you are in the moment, everything, everything about you and how you see that and feel about that. That is, that is self-care. And finally, number 10, self-care activities must always be relaxing. No. Self-care activities Are you doing whatever it is that's most important to you to be your best? Sometimes self-care activities will challenge us, um, help us to grow and develop our resilience. It might be doing some emotional processing that might bring up uncomfortable feelings and release trapped energy in our bodies. Um, self-care might be setting boundaries so that we can preserve our energy. And those things are not always relaxing, but they pay off in the long run and maybe immediately too. Self-care might also be like 
doing something very vigorous that you really want to do for your mental and emotional and physical stamina. So that's also self-care. It's all self-care. How, how you, how you be <laughs> is, is part of your self-care. So that is the list of 10 self-care myths that we busted today. Let me know what you think about all of this. And if you would like to check out some more self-care videos, I have a playlist and I will see you in the next video. Much love and take great care of yourself.